good evening, everybody. While the family's away, I get to play. A few weeks ago, I put a post in my community page that Victron is going to be putting out a new graphical user interface, or GUI, for their Venus OS. And they recently released a public beta back in November. So I want to take a look at it and let's see how they did. See if it breaks anything, see how usable it is, and see if it's got any new additions or features that might be helpful to us. So let's get started. Before I jump into this update, I will warn you that there have been some comments in the Victron community pages regarding the beta. If you're using Kevin Windrum's GUI mods or Setup Helper or any of Kevin's packages, they do not seem to work right now because of the way that this user interface was rewritten. There have been a few instances where if you have those packages installed, it actually prevents your GX device from loading. So make sure if you're going to test this out, you do your own research, see what might happen if you decide to uh, load this beta on your GX device. But I wanna see, you know, does it, does it live up to the hype of what I've seen in some of the documentation? So let's get it loaded. So if we look at the presentation that I shared on my community page, we can see here Venus OS GUI 2.0, and they released this public beta in November of 2023. And it'll go through and it gives you, you know, some images and some ideas some, of what it's gonna look like. I wanna skip all the way down to, I believe it's slide 32. And this is how we go about installing this public beta. So we need to install the latest release candidate of 3.20 version 18 or newer, we need to enable MQTT on LAN, and then it looks like we can view this beta through the web browser. And I know there were a few gotchas. Uh, remote console for the VRM doesn't work, notifications, I'll let you look, freeze this and, and take a look at this. But just be aware there are some known limitations on this beta. To make this easy so that everybody can see this, we're going to open up the remote console over the LAN connection. And I do have Kevin's package, the GUI mods installed, setup helper installed, so hopefully this doesn't uh, <laughs> break anything. So we need to download the latest firmware. So go to settings, firmware, online updates, and we need to change the update feed from latest release to release candidate and then check for updates. And it says, there's an update. And I believe I said 3.20, update 18. So this is update 35. So we're going to install this. And it's probably gonna take a few minutes for it to download the, the firmware and install. I believe it runs through and it reboots the Serbo twice usually. So we'll take a look at it once it finishes installing and gets back up and running. And our servo is back up and running. We'll reconnect over here. So you can see the, the GUI mods changes are all gone. We don't have all the extra information that we used to have. It did come back up, so that's great. So the next thing we need to do is we need to come into settings services, enable MQTT on LAN, the SSL, as well as the plain text version. So we'll come over here, menu, settings, services, and it looks like at some point in time I've already enabled this, MQTT on LAN, SSL, and plain text. And then we should be able to open up a new tab in our browser with the IP address forward slash GUI beta, and it has to be HTTP, not HTTPS. So here's our normal remote console. We'll just copy that, paste, and go to GUI beta.
All right, so I'm assuming here is our AC in, our solar, battery, time. This is nice being able to see the, the time to go because I don't believe that's normally available. Yeah, that, so that's not normally available here on the normal display. Then you got your power over here and then five different pages across the bottom, brief which is what we're looking at right now, overview, levels, notifications, and settings. And then we've got some options up here. These look like controls. Okay, so the generator control, which is good because I don't think we have that in the regular display. Oh, I guess we do. Actually, I want to switch back over anyways. So let's see if this actually triggers it. Yep, so that's good. Set your inverter mode, power mode, grid current limit. Okay. And what's this one over here? So a weather widget, which I think I remember seeing that this doesn't actually reflect accurately. In fact, I know that it doesn't right now because I'm not supposed to have any sun tomorrow. <laughs> and it's not Monday. See, this is kind of nice being able to see little dynamic graphs of solar yield, power usage, loads. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I don't know what this bar is based off of. It can't be set off of my environment settings because I'm not pulling anywhere near 60 amps from ACN. A, a, a neat little dashboard, I guess. It gives you a little bit more information than what you see on your normal console. So let's look at the main overview. So a little more information. You get the kind of the, the normal look, I guess. It'd be nice if this solar yield actually let you click. Oh, you can click it. Oh, you can control the relay. That's kind of neat. And history. So the chart doesn't work yet. Does it work yesterday? How about the last seven days? So not, not everything works. Oh, there's the chart now. So multiple days lets you see the chart. Okay, so this is kind of nice. It, it really gives you the ability to see the data better than what you can normally. So if we look at the normal PV data, so daily history, they try to cram everything into these little rows, basically. And it's, it's, it's not easy on the eyes even the daily tracker history. It's not easy to look at and understand, and you can only see the current day or the previous day. Whereas, you know, this is gonna let us go back 30 days. So that's gonna be really nice being able to do that directly from the touch screen, not have to go into the VRM to do that. Uh, but it looks like they just have to hook everything up still. But that looks kinda nice. all your specific device settings. So I clicked on that as an accident. Um, so you can click on any one of these. So click on that. So it doesn't look like they have any of the input data hooked up yet. You have the same controls that you have that we saw earlier. Current limit. So the mode switch doesn't work yet. Oh, we looked at solar already. Battery. So it's nice being able to easily, and I wish this was a touch screen. This would be really nice on a touch screen. But we're, we're able to quickly dive into the specific information for each device, as opposed to having to what, hit settings, and then scroll to the device, and then enter that device. All we have to do is click on this 
section or, or this container and it will drill into those device settings. So that's nice. Let's see, levels, I believe. So yeah, that's my current temperature sensor that I have. Let's see if we can look here real quick. Here's the slide. So if you've got different tanks, fuel tank, freshwater, black water tanks, you can see the different tank sensors under this tanks tab. All your notifications are going to be dumped right here so that, again, you're not having to drill into anything. I'm kind of hoping that it kind of that it gives you some kind of a visual indicator on the screen that you've got a notification. And then settings. So this is nice. They took all the devices that could really make that initial settings list very long. They dumped it under one device list. So that's nice to see as well. And then you can drill into each one and you can see all the specific settings for those devices. But then they put this header row at the very top with the current stats on those devices. So I, I like that. Even, even drilling into one of these devices, you can at a glance quickly see all the settings. Alarms and errors. I don't know what that error is for. So very cool. And then you've got your your normal device, general settings, firmware, and you know, everything else I believe is normal. Oh, VRM instances. So these must be your instance IDs for the VRM. I'm not sure. I guess that might work when you're using maybe Node-RED or MQTT. And then some debug settings. I'm guessing this is just for the beta so that the developers can get more information from you. But kind of neat. One thing that I know that I don't see right now, which I do miss from GUI mods, and I'm kind of hoping that they give some ability to do this, but there's no way to control the relays. So I'm hoping that they do something similar to the remote switch controls in the VRM, and they give you your relay control like this right here, relay two. Hopefully they add that in here. It looks like they've made it so that it you can have more. So I'm hoping that they add that relay switch in there as well. I don't know, maybe I'll leave it running for a while and, and see, see what I think about it. It's definitely different, but it gives you more of a, a, an updated feel, I guess. I'm glad to see that they're trying to add in a lot of the modifications that Kevin had to make in his GUI mods, just because, you know, a lot of people use those packages that Kevin put out there. And so if there's that many people calling for something, why not just add it into the system? But I wonder if the display on the servo can actually be changed. And I know you could do this with the GUI mods. You could switch between the GUI mods display and then back to the standard display. So let's come over here to menu, settings, display and language. Yeah, there we go, UI version, beta. Okay, so if we look at this now, it's trying to load our update. Sweet, so it does work. That's cool. So again, you just gotta make sure that you know that some things might not work. 
I do want to add that as I've been tapping around here, it's a whole lot more responsive than the old interface. I mean, it's, it's very snappy. So that's always a plus because there were some times on the old interface where it really moved kind of slow and sluggish. So whatever they did to rewrite this, um, it's, it's a whole lot faster. And the regular remote console over your network stops working when you run that display, as well as the remote console will not load because that doesn't work yet either. So you can, you can run it out of your browser fine if you want to play around with it. If you do actually switch your display user interface over to that beta, it will make your remote console inaccessible over the VRM. So yeah, that's, that's neat. I'm probably not going to leave it running on my display just because I need to be able to access this over the, the VRM, but I can still play around with the local network version and see how things work. And as they put out new updates, see, you know, what's, what's going to happen with it. So again, if you've got questions, if you want me to, to look at something specific, let me know if you want to play around with it again, be aware that uh, there are some limitations and there is always that potential that it could uh, mess some things up. I, I will let you know that if you do decide to play around with it, I have been successfully able to roll back. And as soon as I roll back to the prior version, it does reactivate GUI mods uh, for me. So everything is back to normal. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.